So today class would be start from the homework assignment, which I had, I was given on the last session based on the trial balance. So we're going to see the the Korg solution, and then we are going to move on the new topics that we have to study for today. So here is the practical exercise, which is based on the trial balance. Giving you, so I was giving you to prepare the trial balance by the following information from the accounts one which is given you and the figures with the transactions involving the cost cut enterprise throughout the month of June 2000. So I, I received your answers, your solutions based on this assignment. And I'm I'm really satisfied that all of you have done correct. That most of you that it's so great that you do understand what's trial balance. And I I'd like to make one remark first. Let me do that one. On the last class, I was uh, explaining about the um, key account. Do you remember? And we have done after that the. Uh, definition of trial balance and have some exercise based on that. Uh, some of them they have been confused uh, with the T account which we have studied about how to carry down, brought down the balance with the trial balance itself. But right now I would like to say the trial balance must be equal always between the credits and debits. So we do prepare the trial balance before we do any kind of balance sheet. So in the trial balance, all the credits must be equal to debits, or all the debits must be equal to credits. There is no any we do the carry downs, the uh, the balance or brought down it. But by the way, what I I explained about the key account, you remember, because we have started key account, then move to trial balance and have some confusion. And the T account, the, any kind of company bill, they prepare it special to see how much money it owes uh, or how much money it has left. So, and that's why we do the brought down the balance or credit down to see if the company has any liability or has any profit. So, we do that for T account only. For the trial balance, for the balance sheet, uh, that all debits must be equal to credits. So, and we had as well um, the assignment based on trial balance about the alternate price. Do you remember? So just ignore that one because we have the, the brought down and carried down the balance that it was a wrong uh, exercise. Just is ignore that one. So that the exercise which I'm giving you. The, based on the cascade enterprise, this is the correct trial balance. So we have a equation here. Is let me show you first that so here is solution we have it. Uh, at the total, when we do calculation by the debit and credit one, we have got uh, 990,000 for the debit and 990,000 for the credit in USD, right? So we have an equation between debits and credits accounts. So here is solution given you that the capital belongs to credit. So we have put in there uh, to 250,000 under the credit side. Just let me show you first. Here is, right? So inventory is our assets we put on the debit as well accounts receivable that the money which we are going to receive in the future. The accounts payable the the payment which we have to make in the future, that our liabilities we put on the credits. The sales, our revenue, right? Our income, so we put on the credit 600. The purchases, the, the, the goods or, that we buy, that as well as our assets, resources, we put on the debit side. The sales returns, that the sales, that we, we done some sales, but we return some goods, so it's, seems as our um, inventory being increased, so we put on the debit side for 20,000. The purchase return, that which means we return some goods to our supplier that maybe we are didn't satisfied with the quality. 
So put on the credit side. Discount received. When we receive any discount, it seems as we get some profits. We put on the credit side. Bills payable and rent payable. This all the accounts which is we have to pay in the future. It's our liabilities. We put on the credit side. What else? After that, we have some expenses. Insurance is our expense we put on the debit side. Drawings that the owners draw some money from the company, so we put on the debit side. It seems as expenses. The land and buildings is our equipment and the buildings that we put on the debit. It's companies' assets, companies' resources we put on the debit side. The freehold property as well. The plant and machinery, the, the company's equipment, is company's main resource we put on the debit side. The PT expenses, some will have small expenses. The PT, which means some uh, main expenses, maybe paid for some kind of bills, like telephone or something else, we put on the debit side. The cash at bank, the cash is our resource we put on the debit side. The furniture as equipment as well, we put on the debit side, is company's resources. The freight, the freight, which means uh, the goods which is must be sent to the our customers, seems as our inventory. You, you know that as we do put that on the debit side as well. Uh, we have some expense in regarding the wages, salaries. All the expense must be uh, getting on the debit side. Advertising also our the company's expenses, the posters in telephone bills as well. And some we have a general expenses, we call general expenses. So we all those put on the debit side. So after that, we have done the accounts on the right side. We put on the right side, we have got the equation between the debit and credit side. That means our trial balance is the correct. So we have done uh, our accounts with the right solution. Then after that, after trial balance we prepare, we can do a balance sheet, right? So I have some questions. Let me see first. So uh, here is Mr. Cyclos asking that we on the last class we have some discount received we put on the debit side in the trial balance. Why is not credit side? Uh, because you remember, I think you are talking about the Ring Enterprise where we have done the exercise during the class. I was explained that in the previous class that you remember we have got the um, the purchases by the credit, so we haven't paid it, and if, if we haven't paid for the goods, uh, we put that those one under liabilities, right? Yeah, and put under credit as well. We put the. Uh, the discount received on the debit side. That means we we, are, we haven't it received, so we put it on the debit side to make a um, to make an equation. Yeah, because that's right. So here is given the answer, Mr. By Mr. Arif, he said that the discount was not received and it was um, bought on on the credit, so that is why. So you have to remember always when we do some any kind of uh, prepare the trial balance, look at the transactions. Do we buy it on credit or we uh, buy it like pay by the cash one? It's very, very important. So when we do, um, the, when we buy any kind of goods, for example, by the cash or check you or the bank transfer. So that means the payment immediately goes to the uh, supplier, right? But when it's on credit, that means our, our liability has been increased in front of the supplier or the banks. We haven't paid the, the money for the goods. And as well, if we do receive any kind of discounts on that goods, but if we haven't paid, how we can receive the discounts? When we do the payment, we close our credit, then we can get the discounts and put under the debit, the credit side that we have got some like little profit from the discounts one. 
So, uh, so here is I have seen your solutions. That was uh, the right side. As here is I have just looking at the total amount that you have done right. So, any questions so far based on your assignment? Then we can move on the new topic. Another question is. Again, about the, the discounts. So you remember that I have told you that when we do any kind of transactions, given you and the different solutions, we we do like we purchase the goods by the credit or by the cash. As well, we sell our goods by the credit or we can sell by the cash. If we do so, uh, the accounts would be in different size because we haven't get the money yet and we haven't paid for example if we do some purchasement if we do by cash the payment by cash of course the discount would be on the credit side discount received which means if we do receive the discount from the the good that we buy that means like we have got some little profit right and we won't calculate the, the difference between the, the certain price and discounts. We must show the historical cost of the uh, purchased goods, and as well, we must show the discount that we are receiving. So I, I hope you do understand. Any things, any kind of questions? Yes, right, Mr. Lancy. If we buy, if we buy by the cash and we receive the discount by the cash, that comes the discount received comes on the debit side, uh, on the credit side. Sorry. But if we buy the um, here is given you just want to show you again. Here is the we have a purchase, right? We do some purchase, we buy, which means we buy the goods. So we put on the debit side. That our resources being increased by three uh, hundred seventy thousand, and by the these purchase we receive some discounts. Of course, when you do like uh, you buy the a big amounts of goods, some suppliers can give you discount, isn't it? That you know in the markets we we, we see we can see this kind of situation. It's a normal one. So and the discount received we must put on the credit side. Because this is like our little profit that we receive from our purchase. So okay, that's all. I think you have you are that's clear already because we have solved a, a few kind of examples based on trial balance. We do trial balance before we prepare the balance sheet, so it's very important if you do understand. So under under balance sheet, you can see as well these kind of examples, and you would be able to understand more deeply. I think, I hope so. So let me introduce you the new topic for today. In the second chapter under finance, about the measuring and reporting the financial positions, we are talking about the balance sheet and income statement. So now we are going to study the balance. What is the balance sheet and what is the income statement? Because we have done already the trial balance, now we can move to the next step to prepare the, fin the main financial statements of the business. And here is uh, right now I have a questions about like. We have some equipment that why we put under the debit side, not the credit side. In today's new topics, I will give you the detailed explanation why we do like this. So the structure of topic would be so we are going to study about the balance sheet, uh, effect of trading in the balance sheet, the classification of the assets and claims, the balance sheet formats. Uh, the balance sheet as the positive point in time and how to interpret the balance sheet, how to understand the balance sheet itself. So we're going to start about the balance sheet and um, 
how to prepare actually to the balance sheet itself. Here with key items you must be able to use so that you can read yourself. This is balance sheet, assets, claims, all, I think, already familiar for you, the terms. So what is actually the balance sheet? It sets out the assets of the business on the one hand and declines against those assets on the other one. And the assets is what is actually assets. It's resources, the business of resources. And they have certain characteristics such as able to provide the future benefits. So this is the, the answer for the questions like students ask me, why we uh, put the like equipment, land, or buildings, all those um, assets on the debit side. Because it's our resources. With the help of this resource, we can do a business, right? So this is assets. And assets are all that comes on the debit side. So they help us to, to make a business, and they provide the, the benefits in the future like in the profits. What is the client? This is uh, the company's obligations. So, and we have uh, two kinds of clients, that the capital and the liabilities. So, liabilities, you know, this is the, the, those clients which in front of them could be the supplier or customer or bank, right? When we borrow the money. And the capital is the shareholder's equity, the company's equity, right? The, which means the companies uh, where the shareholders or stockholders, we call it, invest money in the, the business, and we call it capital. So here is the assets, they are, have uh, two types. We categorize by the two types our assets, by the fixed assets and the current assets. So the what is the fixed assets? Is the fixed asset held for use within the business on accounting basis. So the under fixed assets comes uh, assets like uh, buildings, like a property, like equipment, which we can use more than one year. And the current assets is those uh, assets which we, um, Used uh, before uh, during the one year within the one year only, and includes the cash items, which is expected to be converted in the cash, like uh, ca cash and on the hand or cash in the bank comes on the current assets, and all uh, resources which is could be converted into the cash very quickly. So comes on the current assets. So we have some examples, and we'll show you later. What is the liability? So we have as as well as the assets two kinds of liabilities, which is the long term liabilities and the current liabilities. So long term liability they represent those amounts which we are not due for repayment within twelve months. So where we have to pay do payment more than one years. And the current liabilities represent the amount due for repayment within one month. That the, we where we borrow the money and have to pay within the one year. Like a short, it it seems like uh, short term or long term credits. Like long term, like more than one year. You borrow for for the more than one year. Uh, maybe at least five or ten years. And the current liabilities, those liabilities, the, the clients you have to pay within the one year, the short term. And the balance sheet formats, I will, I will show you the examples. We have two kinds of formats, which is the horizontal format and the vertical. In the horizontal format, the balance sheet, uh, we have a two sides. Like on the uh, left hand side, you have your assets, the company's assets. And the, on the right hand side, we have a company's liabilities and equities, right? And the vertical format, it comes uh, like a vertical, uh, by and, uh, like an assets and the liabilities and equities comes under the assets. It's, uh, if you are showing an example, it would be the better one. Just let me see if I have 
So this is a just little a presentation for the balance sheet under the finance. You see, uh, you have uh, your subject, which is called the financial management, right? Uh, when a master's student they goes through the study of financial management, it it uh, like expected from the student that they have to know the accounting skills already. That you are actually you must have uh, accounting skills before you go there for the master uh, study and before you s learn the financial management itself. Okay, but as I know, most of you you uh, don't don't have any kind of accounting skills or knowledge. I have prepared you the, the topics on the accounting skills. So that is, what, for example, what I have teach you about the trial balance, the balance sheet, and other kind of statements. That is uh, comes from my own um, like preparation for you. It's not under the master degree. The master degree must uh, teach you. About the how to manage the finance, about the ratios and different things measurements, uh, how to analyze the financial statements. But before we do, if you don't know the, what is actually financial statements and how to prepare, how to interpret them, how you can do the analysis itself, isn't it? So this is the why the, fin uh, the the chapters on the finance is very short. Explanations are very short, not in details given you, because you should know it already. But for example, the second chapter, which is QRIS, and the accounting skills, QRIS explains you in the details how to prepare the the balance sheet and the income statement. So and this is why I'm explaining you uh, to. To to like to push you to 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 review all the slides before you come on the class and try to learn at home read a lot of about the accounting skills to be prepared actually for the financial topics. So let me show you what we have under the accounting skills. So we are going to study the balance sheet in details and about the income statements. What it includes, what kind of accounts it includes, and how to prepare, how to interpret them. Okay. So at the end of this topic, you should be you should understand the income statement, the balance sheet, and prepare these two kinds of financial statements. So let me uh, introduce, uh, let me explain you first the income statement. The income statements we have a uh, uh, two kind of uh, entities in the markets, right? As you know, this is trading companies and some service companies. And when we do the prepare the income statements uh, for both of kind of company, they have a difference. For example, the income statements for trading companies contain three items which are not found on the income statement of the service companies, like a sales revenue from trading goods, like a cost of goods sold, and the gross profit. This is the three kind of items which comes on the income statements of a trading company. The service company, which is you know the service company, which is like consulting companies, which providing services, accounting, or other one. They don't have, they they uh they they actually they they don't include these kind of items. Here is giving you some example of the income statement. Uh, Berhad, I think this is a Malaysian company income statement for the year uh, 2001. Here is just example without the figures. Just show you what kind of items we can find the income statement. So the first one, if you can see, if it's like small. Okay. 
first comes uh, revenue, like say, or we call it sales. So in the income stand, the sales can be sales returns and allowance and sales discount. Then we calculate the net sales. After that, we have some cost of goods sold. This is the uh, the trading company. So that it have a loss of goods, the cost of goods sold. The company which is actually produce the uh, the the goods one. We have some opening inventory. We have some purchases. As well, we have some returns uh, purchase and the returns and discount. This is comes with a, a negative uh, figure. And then we can, after the calculation, we can get the net purchases. As well, we have uh, some carriage inverts, the cost of goods purchased, the clothing inventory, and cost of goods sold. And we can get the gross profit. So uh, at the different companies, the income statements would be different because of the nature of their business, OK? This is uh, just example only. Maybe in at the, your company, the income statement comes um, with the different accounts, as it would be not as trading or the service, for example, the service account. After gross profit, we do calculation by the operating expenditure. We have to um, deduct the operating expenditure from the gross profit. Then we can uh, see the sales expense, how much we have, the sales salary expense, advertisement expense, all our expense comes under the operating expenditure and will be deducted from the gross profit. And when we deduct it, we will get our net profit, right? Here is given to you net profit. So here is all the items is expenses, the company's operating expenses. As you know, the co any com company have some operating expenses and the cost of goods sold. This is uh, for the trading companies. This is just example for you. Because I, uh, later I'll show you uh, more uh, different kinds of examples on the income statements, which is, would be more simply than this one. So uh, now we are going to move on. To the balance sheet, first let me uh, explain you what kind of objectives comes on the balance sheet. So we are going to study, classify the assets and liabilities, you remember? Uh, before we have seen the topic on the finance, which is giving you the definitions very short in the short description. Now we are going to uh, study in the uh, details. So we are going to classify the assets and liabilities in the categories, the credit statement of routine earnings as a supplementary statement for the balance sheet, and distinguish the between the accounts and the report formats in the preparing the balance sheet. Okay, this is seems like it's a little bit difficult, but you will see in the exams it is not so. So uh going to see the formats, you remember we have a two kinds of formats of the balance sheet, which is the horizontal and vertical. I, I will show you in the examples those ones. The classification of the balance sheet, which is assets, liabilities, shareholder equities, and we can see the statement of retained earnings as well. So what is the balance sheet? In the accounting <laughs> program, it's, 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 it's the basic financial statement that any company or entity would prepare. It reports the financial status of company at the point in time, which means its financial position. It includes the liabilities, assets, and shareholders' equity. The classified, the balance sheet provides the user useful information concerning the firm's financial position of the company. So this is very important. So we do preparation of the balance sheet to 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 um, to see how much assets we have what liabilities we owe we and what kind of equity we have. And we can, as well with the bank, you can see the, the company's financial position. Most of outsiders, like uh, the banks or our suppliers or some kind of maybe customers who would uh, request to see the balance sheet of the company, to see your financial position. 
That means to to make a decisions, uh, to have uh, some partners with you or not. So as uh, we have talked earlier, that the bias have a two formats, right? Which is the horizontal and the vertical one. So horizontal is the account format. The two parts are present side by side on the left side and the ha right hand side. On the left right uh, left hand side, it comes assets, and on the right hand side. Uh, comes the liabilities and the equities, right? And we have some vertical format, which is called report format. And the two sides presented one on the other one. Like assets, then comes liabilities, then comes uh, the equities. So the most account, account they prepare the account and format, which is the horizontal. But when the company published the uh, uh, balance sheets uh, for outsiders, for uh, for outside users, they, uh, for external users, they prepared the report format. Okay, this is uh, uh, the the same things, but comes on the different formats. So you won't be confused in the future when you see um, the horizontal or vertical formats. Okay. So here is the classification of the balance sheet. So the balance sheet includes assets, liabilities, and equities, right? And the assets comes our current assets and property and equipment, which is long-term assets, and other kind of assets. And the liabilities, uh, we have includes the current liabilities and long-term liabilities, and other ones. So we are going to see in details what kind of this accounts uh, we have in the balance sheet. The current assets. So now we are going to start about the current assets. The cash and other items that can be converted into the cash are consumed by the business within the one year from the balance sheet date is the current assets. What is kind of assets? We have a cash, marketable securities, the accounts receivable, inventories, and prepaid expenses. And as well, I have some uh, the topic, additional topic, which is explain each items of these assets. So let me show you. Here is it comes on the accounting skills. So I have some definitions of main items in the balance sheet. For example, cash. So cash. It's the ultimate measure of the organization's short-term purchasing power, right? It's able to pay its debts and to expand the, its operations. So the cash have a very high power uh, in the business because uh, we can't do any kind of uh, payment uh, very quickly, right? Sometimes you can see in the balance sheet the, the cash cost like a cash equivalence or the cash and the marketable securities. What is actually the cash equivalence? It's the securities with very short maturities, perhaps up to three months only, that can earn some interest income for the company. That means we borrow for someone like a, uh, and we call it the cash equivalent that we can get this money very quickly within the three months only. What is the marketable securities? Let me show you. We have here is definition marketable securities. This is a short term investment. The company's investment when we um, that we can get the uh, within the one week or month. That means we borrow for someone the cash money and we receive uh, the back our money within the a few weeks only or the months only. So this is the company's investment. So here is giving you what kind of marketable security we have. The securities that can be placed uh, under certificates of Deposit in the company they call CDs. 
It's like a treasury bills, the some commercial paper. And they have a maturity like the uh, uh they have uh, the 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 time which is must be payable between the ninety uh by the hundred and eighty days only. So all these kind of marketable securities, the certificates of debt, they issued by the commercial bank is very important. The commercial bank issued those securities. That means, like for example, the 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 company goes to the bank and put some money, like in deposit, and buy like marketable securities, do such investment in the commercial banks. So, and they are very shortly you can get uh, re back your money in the future. For example, in the U.S. government, we have some treasury bills. Uh, the commercial papers issued by the very large companies. So the treasury bills is uh, those um, certificates like which is issued the government. I'm not sure in Afghanistan if your government issued this kind of uh, securities. The commercial papers issued the very large high quality companies or corporations. So why it's very interesting investment for the company? Because when we purchase the marketable securities like a treasury bills or commercial papers, they all have very uh, high quality uh, in the, and they have a little risk because we are borrowing the, uh, because we are actually uh, giving the money to the, like a badge, like a, the commercial banks or government, which is, I have a very high um, a warranty, right? And actually, this is as investor also gives the company opportunity to get some um, dividends from those securities. This is so you have to remember that under current assets we have a cash, which is, can be ju just a cash in hand, as well as we have some marketable securities that is some kind of certificates of deposit that money which we have all money put in the banks or give the government um, as in, as investment in the future we're going to get uh, some kind of dividends from those securities and as well it's uh, under the short term conditions so we are we can get back our money within the three months only So uh, what else? We have some accounts receivable and the current assets. This is the accounts receivable. This is the like um, the money which we have to receive in the future, but we haven't. For example, we sell some products on credit for our customer, and customers uh, like board like uh, borrowed those uh, products and. Bought it on the credit, so it must be returned the money in the future, maybe within the two or three months. And we call this account receivable, that the account, the money which we are going to receive in the future. As well, we have inventories, you know, the inventories, the, the company's goods, which is would be saved in the stocks, that going, would be, would be uh, sold in the future, goes, and in the future goes under the sales one. And some prepared expenses. This is like expense which we are going to make in the future and we prepare it in the balance sheet. So I have some definitions as well I want to show you. So what is the accounts receivable? Here is given you. That the company sells product to customers. It may receive immediate payment. This may be done through the bank or check or credit or letter of credit or the transfer, so and this is a company which must uh, get the money in the maybe few days. Like for example, when you sell the products like goods or services, sometimes you won't get the cash for as a payment, right? Some some customers they pay you by the check you, but you know uh, to draw the, che the to draw the money from the check like. To clear the check, it takes like maybe two or three days, right? 
you because you have to go to the bank uh, and wait and takes time or the transfer like uh, if it's international transactions as well it takes a two or two to three days up to five days could be so this is like a cost receive the money which we are going to receive in very very soon future Next one, we have some accounts receivable. Here is uh, another kind of definitions. So that, like say, the accounts receive, they have a, a time which you must be paid within the 30 to 60 days only. So you do understand what is accounts receivable, right? It's clear one. The money which we have to receive in the future between the 30 to 60 days only. Okay, I have some questions that asking me, the students ask me, what about the goose if company gets back instead of cash or check or raw material, goods also the, it comes under company's assets. But the goods can be not so uh, quick converted by the cash, you know that. We're going to see the examples as well. Like you are talking about the raw materials or goods, we, uh, we call it inventory. So it's one word, inventory includes all like finished goods or return goods or working process or like raw materials. So this is answer for you. This represents the financial investment that the company has made in the manufacture or the production. When it products more than it sells, you know, okay, and going and trying to sell in the future. And inventory includes all these kinds of goods or raw materials that the company having uh, in the, have in the manufacturing action. So let me uh, back to our the previous topic. So here is some example, the hospital is some sample and the film company, balance sheet December, just showing you like how we can see the assets, uh, the current assets in the example of balance sheet. For example, the current assets includes like a cash, the cash in hand, or cash in bank. Just we call it cash, okay? The marketable security, this is uh, the certificate of deposits, like our, the company's deposits. Accounts receivable, this is money which we are going to receive in, in nearest future. Inventories, which is uh, like a uh, goods, raw materials, and um, so on, and some prepaid ex expenses, like the the expense which you are going to make. This is the total current assets. This is only current assets. This is all assets which can be converted in the cash very quickly. This is the uh, the company's main power, uh, the financial power. Okay. As well, we have uh, fixed assets uh, in the balance sheet. It's a property and equipment, like a land. Here is given in the example, like a buildings, like offices, buildings, you know. The furniture company have the fixtures, some machinery, equipment. Uh, then we calculate the total property. Uh, you have to remember in the, under the, um, Fixed asset, we have to deduct the accumulated depreciation here is given because all these kind of assets they uh, are using more than one year and they must be amortized. They are actually have a more amortization time, right? And they ha must be depreciated. And then, and after that, we can get our net property and equipment. So about the depreciation, what, how to depreciate the assets 
uh, what kind of methods we have and how to make a calculation. We are going to study on the next session, okay? So you don't worry about that if you don't know how to depreciate the equipments or the buildings. So I want to show you some example series. The under fixed assets uh, comes with definitions. What is the land, for example? This can be the site of an office or factory or warehouse, or it might be the wagon and available for the future use. We have some buildings. This includes any structures owned by the company, such as factories or other production facilities, like offices, like warehouses, distribution centers, or vehicle parking uh, places. As well, we have some machinery and equipment, right? And this category includes all production, like a machinery, office equipment, the computers, like a tangible asset that support the operation of the company. We have also vehicles like trucks or tractors or trailers, the company cars which is used for the salespeople or managers. As well, we have rail cars owned by the company and included in this category. So vehicle this is all, all the cars transportation that company use for the business. Okay. As well, we have some furniture and fixtures like this. Also include the the the, the furniture like, you know, the tables, the chairs, all the furniture, the drops that the company has in the offices. So this all assets is a fixed assets. And they are including the balance sheet. And this is the, uh, the, the assets which help make a business, like a machinery equipment. This is the main, like, assets which may, um, uh, help the, to make a business, to produce the products, to produce the goods, for example. So here is, uh, I have some uh, definition for you. What is accumulating depreciation? So. When we have any kind of uh, fixed asset, which is the property, buildings, or cars, they all must be depreciated, right? They what is accumulated depreciation? Sometimes you can't see under your statement. This is what we call like a reserve or the allowance for depreciation. It's the total amount of depreciation expense that the company has recorded against the assets, including the gross book value. So when the tangible assets are purchased and recorded on the balance sheet as a fixed one, the value must be allocated over the course of their useful life in the form of, of non-cash expense. In the income statement, it's called depreciation. So you have to remember that when we have uh, the fixed assets, of course, in the, uh, any business have fixed assets like office buildings or cars or equipment. This all this item they have a useful life. For example, the cars maybe 15, 20 years. The buildings more than any. Depends on the uh, on the items itself. Uh, how how many useful lives has? So and we do we have to we have to prepare the reserve for those uh, items because uh, uh, they have all their values right at the end of they would be broken or would be not work or damaged and we ha we must uh, buy a new ones so we do the depreciation under those items under the fixed items. And always with the depreciation, we have to show in our income statements as well. It seems as our expenses we do. So let's move again under the accounting skills topic. As well, we have some other assets. Have you seen this uh, item? Well, what is a kind of as other assets? This is the item with the future value which are not used in the operations. For example, intangible assets like a goodwill, trademarks, patents, or pre-opening expenses. As well, we have a long-term investments like investment in subsidiaries or restricted cash ones. As well, we have some long-term receivable that the the money which we should receive 
like in the future, like after five or ten years, like like this is long term investments we call it all. The cash surround value of the office life insurance. So this is all other assets comes under uh, the total assets as well. Now we're going to move uh, on the liabilities. So before moving to the liabilities, I want to see your question first. Let me see. You have in the chat some questions. Oh, okay. Sorry, you, have, you said that someone is disturbing. Let me mute all your microphones. I cannot see. I think all of you have moved your microphone already. Maybe it's Nasir Samet. He has uh, the connection through the mobile phone. Okay. Okay, some I have some question. What is the pre-opening expenses? Pre-opening expenses here is. Let me show you here. Where, where we here is intangible as is pre-opening expenses. This is like when we do some investment, like long-term investment. You know the investment we invest the money for to expand, for example, maybe our business, and we have some pre-opening expense that. In the future, we might have some expenses based on this investment. So it comes under the other assets. It's called like pre-opening. It, it, we haven't made this expense, but we are going to do it in the future. So some of you are asking me what is the market level securities. I already uh, explained you what is the market level securities. Uh, it comes on the main definitions. Here it is. Let me show you. As I told you, I can go back to the previous slides because it takes time. So the market security, this is the short-term investments of the companies, right? Which is the, the like a, seems like the deposits, which is uh, saying the commercial banks or like uh, treasury bills or the government papers. All this is the investment that the business do and uh, to get uh, some kind of dividends and which can be the money could be get back very uh, very quickly within the one or two to three months okay so look, now we're going to learn about what is liabilities so the, we have uh, as well the current liabilities and short uh, and the long term liabilities uh, classification. So the current liabilities are the, those liabilities which is due within the one year from the balance sheet. That the current liabilities which we have to make a payment that we borrowed the money and we have to make a payment within the one year only. Under current liabilities comes accounts payables, the accrued expenses, interest, and the salaries, the current portion of long-term debts. The notes payable and income tax payable. So I have uh, the definitions for these items. We'll show you right now. You'll be able to see. So liabilities, the amount that company owes to others for products and services has purchased, right? And must be repaid. Uh, like a current one, which must be repaid within the one year. Include all money that the company owes and must be paid within the one year. And the long term is the those which is uh, must be paid within uh, more than one year, within the more than one year. This is the long term liabilities. So we have some. What is accounts payable? I, I think you know you have seen these accounts in the balance sheet and the trial balance, right? The accounts payable. The, this is a mass which is owed to vendors or suppliers for products delivered and service provided for which payment has not yet been paid. That means 
that the, the Kaufman, that the, that means we we have to pay uh, for our suppliers or customers in the future within the one year. For example, maybe we have we have made some purchase, we, we purchased the goods one, but we haven't made the payment by the cash, for example, or and this calls the accounts payable them the payment which we we must do in the future and it normally it's like takes uh, one to two months only that that means the company has purchased the product sales on credit right this is a simple example like the suppliers or the customer they have agreed to postpone the receipt of their cash for specified period Okay, and normally it takes well, one to two months or 30 to 60 days time. So accounts payable, that means it's the company's liability, the company's claim that we should must pay within the one to two months in the future. I think you, this one is clear, right? What is the bank knows? Under uh, current liability, you can see that the bank knows. This amount has been borrowed from a commercial bank or some kind as a lender and has not been paid like a short-term credit okay and because this amount must be repaid within the one year it's classified under the current liabilities so bank notes this is the, the credit we take from the bank on the short terms regulations okay we have as well long-term liabilities and here is definitions give you what is the long term debt you can find in the balance sheet. It's amount that were borrowed from the commercial banks or any kind of financial institutions and which is are not due until sometime beyond one year, which is must be paid more than one year. And this cut like it's long term credits, okay? And this category may include a variety of long term debts. Like securities include debentures, mortgage bonds, or convertible bonds. So this is a uh, different kind of uh, the credit that the company can get. Like a mortgage, you know, like or some or debentures can be getting or some debt securities. So if you will see in your balance sheet these kind of items, you must know that this is long-term debts. Okay, like a. Sh this is the, the when the company takes uh, uh, the long-term credits from the banks. So this is a, uh, we have seen the current liabilities. What is the cost payable? You know that the, the, when we the companies uh, purchase the products on credit and have to make a payment within the one or two months. Um, accrued expenses and interest, this is the, like uh, when the bank have got some credit, for example, uh, well, sorry, when the, the company uh, got the credit and have to pay the interest based on this credit. This calls the accrued expense increase. The salary, this is a, when company must pay the salary for its staff in the future, uh, like not in the future, I mean, haven't paid it, but must be paid uh, the, for the previous months, for example. The current portion of uh, long term debts, this is like, as well when we have got some credit from the banks and we have paid some commissions for the or the interest we call it and uh, when we are paying that this calls the current portion of the long term debt no stable uh, income tax pay income tax pay, this is the income tax that we have to uh, pay uh, but we haven't paid yet So here are some examples giving you how the current liabilities comes in the balance sheet. So we have some current portion of loan term debt, the accounts payable, income tax payable, the accrued expenses. And total would be the current liabilities. So let me show you, I have some definition for those items, I think so. No, I don't have it. 
So we we have already seen that the bank's notes accounts payable. Okay, that's so. So this is the car liabilities which must be paid within the one year. Okay, the company have uh, claims which is borrowed the money and have to re, uh, back, uh, re, re, uh, pay the back money within the one year only. So here is long term liability we have seen already some mortgage payable which is accounts payable like net of car, net of current portion the bonds payable we have it which is um, and notes payable right which we uh, which we, means we have taken some uh, credits and haven't paid yet now we are going to move on the shareholders equity we have a um, let me show you first let me show you the shareholders equity uh, the definitions so what is actually the company's equity? It represents the cumulative account amount of money that all the all owners of the business have invested in the company. Like all investors, they have invested in the company some money. Kind. This is all uh, accumulated. Uh, the money calls the shareholders equity. And you have to remember when you see the balance sheet or income statement, uh, the the items like preferred stock or common stock or retained earnings are given in the historical amount that the company received when it sold those securities and retained profits. And right now I want to show you what kind of shares company have. We have a preferred shares, we have ordinary shares, and we have some retained earnings, right? So here is what is the ordinary shares and what is the preference shares. Here is giving you uh, differences uh, between two kinds of shares. Come, like ordinary shares. The, this is the when the, the ownership in the corporation, uh, the the investors, the shareholders, they have a voting right. They get some potential dividends, right? They are last to receive in the event of bankruptcy the money. They are actually their investments, but the preference shares. This is the preferred shareholders have a two preference on the earnings and open liquidations. Actually, this, the, the shareholders which have no voting rights, which have some fixed dividend rate, rate and they have no, like if we say no voting right, they like cannot uh, make decisions in under the business. They just uh, have bought the shares and uh, expect to receive the fixed, fixed uh, dividends in the fixed rates, okay? But ordinary share, in the ordinary shares, the, uh, the shareholder, they receive the dividends uh, based on their profits. If the company has profit, they receive the profits. And the rates would, would differ by the profits uh, amounts, okay? What is a retained earnings as well? In the balance sheet, you can see the item which is called the retained earnings. The accumulated net income that has not been distributed in the form of dividends. Like, a, if this is a steam, like the company's profit, which is, uh, from this profit, we haven't made the payment for our shareholders. And the super statement of retained earnings indicates the change in retained earnings balance since the previous period due to existence of net income. Okay, this is uh, like I want to show you the uh, different kind of definition which would be more simple for you. So the retained earnings is uh, the portion of the total profits of the company that the owners have reinvested in the business. So like for example, uh, the shareholders has uh, they have got some profits during the year, okay, and they decided to reinvest the money uh, to the company, to the business, to expand it, for example, uh, to like to open uh, new branches or to produce a new products or services. When the shareholder they 
uh, reinvest uh, their profits. They won't get their dividends. They are going to reinvest no. to the businesses. No. This cost no. maintaining it means okay. No. And the amount in the balance sheet and the income statement would be shown uh, in the historical no. cost. Okay. No. So I have some questions. Let me see what questions you have charted me. So some of you ask him, what is a mortgage payable? Like mortgage, this is like credit under, we check under some buildings or offices or the cars like, and that we have to pay in the, we, uh, we have to make a payment based on this mortgage credits. So this is the mortgage payables. The credits that we have uh, should pay that we, we have taken from the banks, okay? This is the mortgage payables. I know some of you say that I'm too fast in explaining, but here is I'm trying to capture three kind of uh, the topics, which is include all the informations, uh, would help you to understand the balance sheet items and income statement. So don't worry, because we have some examples, sample examples on based on the balance sheet, and we have some practical exercises. All these, uh, you remember why I'm fast explaining? Because before coming to the class, you have to review all these topics and try to understand definitions. And then when I would uh, run the class, I would explain the most important things and more difficult items only. So we are back into retain earnings. So, the, so retain earnings. The, the, this is uh, the profit, the, the portion of profit that the investors reinvest into the business. Okay, to expand the business, for example. So here is uh, examples giving you how we can see the shareholders' equity on the balance sheet. Like we have some preference shares for three thousand six hundred fifty, some additional paid in capital. Like some addition, what is the addition paid in capital? This is additional investment that the shareholders do, uh, and retain earnings. Then we can calculate the total shareholders equity. Shareholders or stockholders equity. This is the same things you have to uh, remember. If you can see in the balance sheet, would be like a stockholders equity or just equity or just capital. You must. You must consign this is the same things and comes under the uh, company's uh, equities. So that's all about the preparation of the trial, uh, oh, sorry, income statement, the balance sheet. Let me uh, back to definitions because you have a lot of questions about if I, each items, right? So we have studied about routine earnings. Uh, here is, let's uh, re memorize the, what is the balance sheet ex itself. This is a financial statement that summarizes the company's assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity at a specific point in time. And these three balance sheet segments, which is the assets, liabilities, and equities, they give investors an idea as to what the company owes and always, as well as the amount invested by the shareholders. And the formula given to you on the balance sheet, the, where is the assets equal to liabilities plus the shareholders' equity, right? This formula I was giving you in the previous topics as well. So you must remember that always assets equal to liabilities and shareholders' equity. Here is some examples I want to show you that the the under the balance sheet. So you have to remember that the main categories of assets, they usually listed first 
uh, in the order of liquidity. So this is a sample of a small business balance sheet, okay? Small business. This is just a simple uh, balance sheet. Mm. And this is, uh, I have to say, this is a um, horizontal balance sheet. From, because from the left hand side we have uh, assets, and uh, from the right hand side we, still, we have a liabilities and the owner's equity, right? So on the assets comes uh, the cash, accounts receivable, then, and the tools and equipment, which is a long term assets. Then we have to summarize those figures and calculate the total amounts. On the liabilities and e owner security, we uh, can see the liabilities, which is not payable, the accounts payable. And we do calculation by the total liabilities, how much a company always actually. Then we calculate the owner's equity, like capital stock, which is uh, shares we have it, and retain earnings. Then we calculate the total owner's <coughs> equity. After that, we have to add the, uh, we have to accumulate the liabilities and the owner's equity and get the total amount. As you can see, we have equation between the assets and the liabilities and owner's equity, right? The, the amount is same, 30, uh, 7,800 on the assets and 37,800 on the liabilities and owner's equity. So this is a balance sheet which must be equal always. I have some another kind of examples to show you. For example, another balance sheet you can find. This is as well um, the 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 horizontal balance sheet, right? Uh, on the left hand side we have assets, which is the cash, accounts receivable, inventories. Uh, long term assets like the property, plant, and equipment. Then we calculate the total assets. And from the uh, right hand side, we have uh, liabilities, which is uh, short term, like accounts payable, short term debts. And long term debts we, as well, we have. And we have, can see that we have a shareholder's equity. So, and the two sides are both are equal by the 100, right? The left side equal to right side. The assets equal to uh, liabilities and shareholders equity. I'd like to mention that the depreciation, which is the, uh, we do calculation for the fixed assets. You remember, we must we have we will show in the income statements only. We won't show the depreciation cost in the balance sheet. So we have some. Another kind of examples on the income statement. Okay, here is some given to you. Uh, we are going to memorize the, the definition of income statement. What is income statement actually? It's the one of three primary financial statements which is used by the companies and show the uh, the company's uh, financial positions. So uh, the, any kind of company, business, or entity have a three kind of financial uh, statements, right? It's the income statement, it's balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. So today we study about the balance sheet and its items, as well about the income statement. And the next class we are going to study about the cash flow statement and about the depreciation methods. So the income statement is, is actually summarize the revenues and the expenses generated by the company over the uh, period, uh, the reporting period. It's uh, all uh, it's often uh, generated by the uh, within the one year. So we are going to we are we summarize the company's revenues and ex expense that we made in the one year. So the basic uh, here's formula given for the income statement is the revenues minus expenses gives you the net income. Okay, uh, that formula was given you in the previous topics as well as I remember. So uh, I want to show you some simple example of the income statement. Like we do sales, how much revenue we got? Like for example, company received two hundred, and how much cost the uh, company made? To, to make the revenue uh, when the, it's actually run the business by the 190. 
and then we can calculate the, by the formula revenue 200 minus uh, the cost expenses 190 will get the net income which is equal to 10 US dollars, right? So uh, the comp here is we can say that company has got the uh, net income by the 10 uh, uh, USD by the 10 US dollars. But as well, we can get the loss. It could be if the our expense could be uh, would be more than the, our sales. Like a cost would be not 190, maybe uh, 220. And then, of course, we can get the negative figure, which is be uh, integrate as a loss. The company can have what the loss. Here is another kind of uh, statement. The income sent for the company is like that. This is a little bit more uh, complicated. So first, we do calculation. Uh, we uh, have to calculate our total revenue. Revenue or sales. Then we do calculation by the cost of goods sold. That we the cost, the expense we have made to produce the goods or service uh, goods. This is a trading common. Then we can get the gross profit, right? Uh, after uh, the, we have uh, the, get the gross profit, we have to deduct our operating expenses. The, the expense we have made during the, our operation, like we paid salaries to our staff. We made some rental payment for offices or warehouses. We made some uh, utilities, like we paid for the electricity water bills, like because we used the, the electricity and water to produce the goods, right? So as well, depreciation. You see, depreciation must come under income statement. So uh, depreciation seems as our expenses. Then uh, we have got the, our operate, total operating expenses, which is uh, equal to 30,000. After that, we have to uh, deduct the operating expenses from the gross profit, 30,000 minus 80,000, and we will get operating uh, profit here is by the 50,000. After operating profit, we have got, we have to think about that we have to pay some dividends for our shareholders, right? We call it interest expenses. As well, we have to pay some uh, taxes, right? The income, uh, so it comes later. So we do first, we do payment by the interest expenses, the dividends for our shareholders. We deduct it from our operating profit, and we can get the income before taxes, which is 40,000. Uh, in short uh, terms, we say EBT, income before taxes. After that, when we have made the payment for dividends, we have to calculate our, we have to make a payment for our taxes, right? Uh, taxes, which is equal for 10,000. And we are going to deduct tax from uh, from the income before taxes, and we will get the net income. This is the net income. This is the income that company generated from the business, which is equal for uh, two for thirty thousand. You see. Now, now we have got the net income. Now we can see uh, how how much our company actually would be valued in the market. If you would like to see, it, like first we we have to calculate how much numbers of shares we have. Like it's here is given thirty thousand. Then we have to uh, divide our net income on for the number of shares the company has. And we will get the earnings per share, like the, the value, how much uh, the value per share in, of the company. So it's value one dollar, one US dollar. So here is in this company, XYZ company have a business, right? It have a own shares. So the shares in the markets, one share in the market values for one US dollars. This is we do income statement preparation. Uh, how we do uh, based on the example. This is a simple example, and this is the example based on the some trading company which producing the goods. Okay, which producing the goods one. Well. 
So, uh, okay, I have some question. What is the interest expense? This is interest expenses. Uh, the interest that we have to pay, for example, maybe we have taken the credit from the banks and we have, we must pay in the future the interest on the credits, right? The, like commissions on the credit. This is the cost interest ex expenses. Before I have told you that the dividends for the shareholders, that's I was around, sorry. The interest expenses, this is the, the, uh, the commissions on the credit that we pay in the future, this here is. So what is the number of shares outstanding? This is the number of shares outstanding. The, how many, uh, like how many numbers of shares company have? How many, how many shares company produce? Like 30, 30 items, 30,000 items here is. Uh, different companies could be different by the thousands or the, by the millions or as well. Like a big corporations, they have uh, shares in the months of uh, hundreds of thousands or millions, for example. Okay, I have some questions. What is uh, asking me EBT or EBIT? EBT, this is the short, ter uh, short uh, terms of the income before uh, taxes, the first letters of the income before tax EBT. But EBIT, this is income before interest in taxes. Okay, I just would like to income like e EBIT. Sometimes you can't see in the income statement, like uh, this uh, comes in the short uh, definitions, EBT or EB, EBIT. So here is, this is income, EBT, EBIT is the income uh, before interest that we are going to pay and the taxes that we have to pay. Here is. Okay, uh, some of you are asking me uh, that they did understand uh, about the definitions, how to we get the units per share. This is a, the, the, just a simple calculation. When you have your net income by the 30,000, you have, the, each company knows how many shares they have, uh, they produce, like uh, have, how many shares they have in the company, right? Here is given like a 30,000. If you have so, you just have to make a calculation, like take your net income, which is equal to um, 30,000, just a moment, like a 30,000 of USD, and divide it on the um, number of shares uh, the company has. Just one, just one moment. Like a uh, number of shares, number of shares, like company produced 30,000 of shares. This is in items, given to you in items. And then we will get uh, earnings per share, EPR we call it, EPR. Earnings per share. The value of share, which is called the value, how much uh, value the per share in the company. Value per share, which is equal for one USD, right? If you have a number of shares, maybe here is given like 30,000. If it's not a 30,000, like 10,000, for example, then you will get the net income 30,000 divided on 10,000, you will get uh, 3 uh, USD, which means the per share value by the 3 dollars. Okay, that the, like uh, your companies, like we are going to get the price of the company itself, like how much the company values in the markets. Okay, if you would like to sell it or someone wants to buy your shares, so you can get your price 
to cal by calculation of the net income and the number of shares. So when we have a, some net income, here is, right? This is a net income. This is a, like the company's profits, right? The, this net income the company can use, for example, to expand its business. Like, as I have told you, to produce new products or services or goods. Uh, to, to That money can be invested like... Uh, uh, to the banks in the deposits, for example, or can be investing in new projects, or can be opening new branches of the businesses, or you just can take this money and pay for your shareholders as dividends, or you can reinvest in the company. So you have a two ways to reinvest this, this money, the net income, to the businesses, to expand it, for example, or to to pay for it as a dividend for your share, shareholders. So you have, or to, for example, maybe you would like to make as a, a long-term investment for the new projects as well. Each company, the net income. So and after that, uh, the. Uh, after two or three classes, I think so, we have the topics which cause decision making. Like when we do, uh, when we are going to invest the money of the, com the company's income to reinvest it in the company, and how we can do the right decisions. Um, and this comes on the, the new topics, which is would be in the futures. Uh, let me see. It would be on the last uh, three classes, I think, so I have seen. So, and here is another example giving you the Hershey Food Corporation income statement. Here is, uh, let me show you, explain for us that the, this statement given by the three years, 98, 97, 96. So, we do prepare that kind of income statement by the previous years which is to compare the company's income, to compare the company's development actually, how much income the company gets uh, during the uh, two years, how it's developed actually, uh, how much it's expanded during the two kinds of different years. So as well, this is an example for the income statement, but the Hershey Food Corporation you can see. Like for us, first comes the net sales. We call sales or revenue. Net, then costs and expenses of the company. Cost of sales, uh, sales marketing administrative, this is operating expenses, right? Loss on disposal of business, some loss could be in the company. Then we calculate the total ex ex cost and expenses. After that, we can get the income before interest and income taxes. As I told you, this is. I B uh, E B I T, which is income before interest and taxes. Then we can calculate the interest expense that we are going to pay, and we can get the income before income taxes. After that, we have to pay our taxes, right? The provision for income taxes, and after deduction, we can get the net income. After we have got the net income, we can uh, uh, we can calculate our uh, value of the shares, okay? For example, here is given you the net income per share, the basic one, our net income per share the is diluted. This is like uh, the Hershey Food Corporation, this is a big, huge corporation, right? They have a different kind of shares, like uh, which calls the basic or diluted, the uh, which is uh, on the bursa, like, like, the stock, which is the stocks of the level of the A or B, uh, maybe you have series. 
you have heard about this, that we have a, uh, the big corporations in the uh, stocks which have um, different kind of shares. Uh, and uh, here is giving you like they could produce the basic uh, shares or the loser shares. And here is given to you the calculation of the common stock, that the common stock actually of the Hershey Food Company uh, is valued by the 0 0.92, the 92 tenths. And uh, the, the stocks of the class B valued by the uh, 0 0.83 US dollars, like 83 cents only. So we can say the Hershey Food Corporation have uh, two kinds of stocks, which is the common, which is valued highly than the, the class by the B1. But about these stocks, the, the differentiation of the stocks, the types of stocks, which is class B or A, basic or dilutive here is given all as examples. This is comes under um, different subjects, which is uh, I think the under markets and economics you have to learn. If you have learned about this, you might you, I, I I suppose you you know it. Uh, do you have uh, the class which is called the um, economics or markets? I think you should have it. So about all these kind of different kind of shares, what is the uh, differentiations and what kind of types we have, you must learn under those classes. Okay, some of you are asking me to finish the class already. That's, that's, we are going to finish because we have learned, we have already uh, completed all the three kinds of topics. And I'd like to uh, show you the homework assignments. After the class, I'm going to send you homework assignments. So uh, please take attention on the homework assignments. Here is, you have a three kind of exercises, practical exercise. First one, on the balance sheet. So you have to match the matching exercise cost. You have to match the items on the right with the items on the left. Uh, here is on the left side given you uh, the classifications of assets and liabilities, right? The fixed assets, car uh, assets or liabilities, and so on. And uh, from the right hand side, you have a definitions, and you have to match to 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 match this definition with this uh, with the uh, left hand side items, okay? You have to find the right definition. This is the first assignment. Next one, exercise number two is the base on the preparation of the balance sheet. So the list of accounts is given in alphabetical order. You have to prepare the balance sheet ending in December uh, 2010. So the table one helps you to put accounts in the right place. So first. Let me sh explain. You have some accounts, right? All these accounts comes with the figures uh, by the alphabetical order. And you have to put them on the right side in the table one, which is the balance sheet. Like what comes on the current assets? You have to put these accounts, all the accounts items. What comes on the uh, fixed assets, on the liabilities or e uh, or, or equities. And then you have to calculate the total amount, which whereas the assets must be equal to liabilities and shareholders' equity, okay? This is the total assets have to be equal to liabilities and equity. So this is a balance sheet, which, the, which is the vertical balance sheet. Next one, exercise number three, you have income statement. So based on the transactions, you have, you have to prepare the income statement. So we described a limited number of transactions of a newly created consultancy company in year one. So here is, you have a different kind of transactions. And based on it, 
You have to prepare the income statement. Okay, so let me show you. Like a first one. The owner contributed 5,000 brought in case by using the 500 shares at the nominal value of 10,000 each. Okay? So you have to calculate how much uh, the company have a capital. To start the operation, the company borrowed 5,000 uh, euro at annual interest rate of 5%. Interest and repayment due in January of each year for the next five years in starting from starting second year. So you have to put uh, the prepared income statement. Uh, based on these transactions, seems like complicated, but you have to think a lot to review all your topics that I have given you, and uh, as well, you can read uh, the e-books that I have sent you at the first time. You remember, there is all the definition explanation giving you how to prepare the income statement. So, and they sign for this, just prepare the income statement for the first year only, okay? So, and this is, is uh, the homework assignment I will, I'm going to send you after the class. But it seems like complicated, but I'm asking you to try to solve it. But anyway, if you want, it would be difficult to at the next class, we are going to solve it during the class, actually, during the session. So, actually, that's all for today. I uh, thank you for your attention. Um, so, we are going to finish the class right now. I haven't sent this homework time, just I'm going to send after the class, okay? So, I hope you enjoyed the class. Uh, most of you, if you are confused with the items, definitions of the balance sheet, the, with the definition of the accounts in the balance sheet, try to review these uh, topics. You all have these topics already in your email boxes. So it's very easy. Just open it and read it, uh, each item. Like you see, this explanation is a very simple one. It could be clear for you. So and so that's all for today. Thank you very much for enjoying the class. Any questions, just email me. The the homework assignment, which is homework assignment number five, would be sent you after the class, okay? Just I wanna finish the class first to close the Webex, then I'll email you. So thanks a lot, have a good weekend and goodbye.